Chapter 5 After entering the Megaplex Pyramid for the first time, Milo was overwhelmed with a sea of people. He followed the general flow of traffic while peering over his shoulder periodically. There were many streams of people flowing in various directions. The current Milo was in carried him into a truss tram. Milo entered and packed in tightly with the other fleeing passengers. When the tram doors finally closed, the small enclosure was packed so full that he could hardly breathe. Just before the tram made its ascent, Milo snuck a peek over his shoulder and did not see any guardians in sight. A pleasant, synthesized voice greeted the passengers through the internal speakers. Welcome to the Megaplex Pyramid. The next stop, Grand Marquis Echelon. Milo had no idea where that was, but it was relieved he was no longer being pursued. The tram quickly accelerated up the southeast truss and came to a stop one level above the main floor. The doors opened, allowing some people to exit. Milo spilled out with the others, which gave him a chance to catch his breath. He took a deep breath and filled his lungs with the fresh, filtered, oxygenated air. The smell of moist plant life was the most noticeable aroma. Milo spun around to take in the view. He went from a closed, confined space to a massive expanse of natural-looking grass and leaves. Everything was so serene, even the people were moving slower. There were no more frantic herds of people screaming in fear. Life, it seemed, had gone back to normal. He walked over to the edge of the pyramid, which was covered with slanted glass, and peered out over the horizon. He was just 20 stories off the ground, but the view was incredible. He could hardly imagine what it was like on the top tier. After gazing out across the magnificent landscape, Milo headed toward the park a botanical garden that combined artificial plants with real ones. It was all very well designed to create the illusion of a park in paradise. Milo blissfully ignored the speakers that were concealed behind objects, pumping out sounds of rustling leaves and chirping birds, and kept walking. Within moments of his arrival, he felt his nasal passage fill with fluid and start to drip. He quickly pulled out his handkerchief and wiped his nose. When he pulled the cloth back, he noticed it was filled with blood, and he felt woozy. He figured it had to do with the lack of moisture in the air, combined with the altitude. He found a bench that was not occupied and laid down. With his head tilted back, he held the handkerchief over his nose to stop the bleeding. You have five new messages. Milo was about to reply to Alex's messages, but before he could, a towering frame came into view and diverted his attention. It was the same guardian who had been pursuing him. Thought you could run and hide, didn't you? The guardian said in a baritone voice. How did you even find me? We can always find you. Milo tried his best to remain calm, but on the inside he was terrified. That little chip in the back of your neck? It comes in really handy for identification and tracking purposes. What did I do? Milo asked as he was dragged to his feet. You ran from me. Well, to be fair, you were chasing me. Besides, that's not a crime. What were you doing at the rally today? The guardian asked. Just listening to what the leader had to say. But not everyone was just listening, right? I suppose that's true. Some were watching and listening. The guardian was not too happy with Milo's antics, and squeezed the back of his neck with his powerful hand. Ah! Milo screamed in agony. Careful! You wouldn't want to crush my tracking device. Then how would you find me? Milo was handcuffed and escorted back down to the main floor, where a row of guardian transport vehicles were stationed. He was placed into the back of one of the vehicles with an assortment of ragtag derelicts who appeared to be an unfriendly bunch. They didn't even so much as look at Milo or acknowledge his presence in any way. Milo followed suit and remained to himself. The doors were sealed and the vehicle rose off the ground. The smooth ride downtown offered Milo a moment to gather his thoughts. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong and would likely be released by mid-afternoon. But still, being arrested and handcuffed was never a good thing. The next time the transport vehicle stopped, Milo and the others were being hauled out and placed into one of the holding cells. The cells were packed with people that looked just as haggard as him. Milo stuck to himself and tried not to make eye contact with anyone. He figured he was in the company of some dangerous and deranged criminals, society's misfits. A middle-aged woman approached Milo, displaying a friendly smile. May I sit with you? She asked. Yes, of course. I'm Mara, the woman said as she subtly bowed her head. Milo Ryan, pleasure to meet you. 
It's unfortunate we're meeting under these circumstances, she said with a slight smile as she looked around. Milo gave a forced smile back. Your first time in jail? You can tell? You seem a bit nervous. Is this your first time as well? No, this definitely isn't my first time, and probably not my last. But don't let my calmness fool you. I'm nervous too. So why are you in here? Milo asked. Oh, nothing really. Just spoke my mind. And you? I didn't do anything, Milo said. The woman laughed. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Milo asked, almost taking offense. This jail is probably filled with people claiming they didn't do anything. Most people in here are probably guilty of something. Just like you, right? Listen, lady, I don't know what you're getting at, but I didn't do anything. Really. I know, I know. You're innocent. I got it. She said as she passively held up her hands and smiled. That's a nice jacket, by the way. Thanks. Apparently it was the wrong choice of outfit today. Had I known it was the uniform of choice for a terrorist cult, I would have worn something else. Is that what you think we are? A terrorist cult? Wait, you're with them? You're one of those lunatics that incited a riot today at the rally? You should be careful with your words, Milo. They can get you into trouble. Sorry. Don't worry about it. It's fine. So you're with them? Yes, I am with them, but we're not lunatics, nor are we terrorists. Then who are you? 